Joining us now are the Conservative MPs Marcus Fish and Jonathan Janogli and from our Salford studio, Jim Winship, Director of the British Sandwich and Food to Go Association, which represents sandwich retailers and suppliers. And the question that we're really trying to get to the bottom, I guess, gentlemen, is how do we distinguish facts tonight from uh, fear-mongering and what we need to know from what we're being told? Um, Jim, if I can just start with you in Salford, what does no deal mean for you for the sandwich industry? I don't think it means absolutely no sandwiches because our industry is very creative and uh, clever at coming up with new recipes. But certainly there would be serious problems in terms of some of the fresh ingredients we, we bring in from the European Union and also from overseas, if, particularly if we have problems at the ports and uh, we can't get ingredients through because uh, they're all fresh and uh, don't have a very long shelf life and we've got no chance to stop piling fresh ingredients. So I think the the answer from the sandwich industry is going to be that it's going to limit the amount of choice that consumers have if we suddenly crash out of uh, Brexit in the way that's being talked about. Are you saying no fresh sandwiches then? Uh, there will be a certain amount of fresh sandwiches. I think we're, our in the food industry in the UK uh, isn't self-sufficient, so we can't produce everything here that we need. Uh, our industry, like many parts of the food industry, has to go abroad to buy ingredients, particularly because consumers like to have uh, out of season, ha have lettuce and tomatoes and things that perhaps so, can't be grown here <laughs> sorry, in the volumes sorry to we press. need. Let me, let, me, let me just try and get a sense of you. What would be in those sandwiches then? What do the sandwiches look like to you after a no-deal Brexit, bluntly? Uh, they're, they're probably going to be shortages of ingredients, particularly like uh, tomatoes, which we buy in quite a lot from Spain and, and Europe generally, uh, lettuce and at certain times of the year. I think there are also going to be uh, products like avocados that are difficult to come by if, if we've got a, a difficulties at the ports and things. So why can't we just buy British? I mean, w you could imagine or envisage the sandwich which is just a purely British sandwich, right? It's a nice idea, but it, uh, unfortunately the, the industry isn't geared up for that at the moment. and It would take a fair amount of time for us to do that to replace the sources we have around the world. And we, we live in a world that is global. It's not uh, uh, no longer just isolated to our shores. So I think, I think realistically, any sort of crash out of, of, Bre of, of Europe uh, and sudden changes are going to cause problems. And we're already seeing uh, the lack of confidence in people working in the UK from Europe and shortages of people in a lot of our industry. Um, if you walk down any high street at the moment, okay. you'll see signs up for people, recruitment signs. Jim. That is a symptom of it. Thank you very much indeed. Marcus Fish, are you going to tell the director of the British Sam Association he's just deploying Project Fear? Well, I think silly season has obviously started a bit early this, this year. Why is that there's, silly? There's no suggestion whatsoever that, that imports from the EU will, will be limited by, by our new tra trade arrangements. Right, That's so, just a complete... So you, complete don't, you don't believe anything he's saying no, I don't about the warning that signals that are coming no, out? No, I don't believe that, that there would be a blockade of imports from the EU. That, that really is truly ludicrous. In a no-deal situation, there is no trade arrangement. That's exactly what he's talking about. That's but a that scenario he's just But that doesn't mean that drawn. we don't let anything into the country. That, that's just It's complete, not about letting things in. It's about not knowing where what you get things is, from and what's stored. leaders of this, this country who will respect the... Uh, referendum result and, and get on with the business of actually planning and make, making arrangements. What on earth does that mean? Respecting the referendum result is a platitude. What you've just heard is a man who works in the food industry who says he envisages it will be more difficult to get fresh food if there is no deal. Well, Why don't I you don't, believe that? Because it's completely wrong. It's, it's completely false. It's a completely false ass assumption. There is not going to be a trade blockade of Europe Jim, I'll let you come by back on the that. UK after Brexit. It's Briefly, Jim, I'll happen. let you come back on that. I, I think the, the issue is what the border controls are like, and we've had problems in the past with border controls, and uh, our whole industry, and, and not just the well, whole food industry, is geared up to very swift movement of goods in and out of the UK. Uh, if we suddenly have border controls being intro introduced that aren't there now, that's going to cause some massive problems with the fresh ingredients. We live in a just-in-time world. We don't okay. stop yeah. pile of ingredients. L let me bring in Jonathan. Are, are you happy to see us talking about these sorts of preparations now? And by that, obviously, I mean the government uh, being more frank yeah. about the, the no-deal preparations. Yeah, I, I think it's really important we do, but let's just face up to the fact that 40% of our fruit and veg comes from the EU. So if we are in a no-deal scenario where we don't have uh, a tariff agreement, we're on the WTO, which is 50% uh, extra, for instance, on, on milk, 
um, if we're in a situation where we can't get the lorries across because you know two minutes extra checking creates a 17 mile backlog um, if we're in a situation where companies are having to fa file a lot more paperwork you know this is going to create a very serious situation whichever way you look at it so i think it really is important that we that we do look at the no deal scenario but i also think it's important to realize that the the, the project fear accusation that's been put out today um, I think that's, that's impractical. I think the real reason why we've had the delay, and there has been a delay, and I, it's been... So you think the government's changed yeah, its mind? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the government should have been putting out this stuff earlier, and I think the reason why they didn't, and I'd agree with Marcus on, the reason why they didn't was because they didn't have a position on the white paper. Okay. And, the white, and I don't think they wanted to upset people with, with no-deal scenario stuff until they had a government uh, policy... So if I'm position. frank, Marcus, I don't get your position entirely because either you think that it is right, as you said, you agree that they should have put this stuff out earlier, or else you think they're putting it out and it's all project fear. They, they need to, to plan well and to make the right arrangements and to be very clear with, with, with business and with individuals what is going to happen. There, there is absolutely no suggestion that we, we will impose tariffs on our, our imports from, from the e EU. There is no... There's no reason that it needs to be like that. Britain, There's no deal. Brit Britain There's no needs, transition. There's no agreement. Britain it's needs not about Brexit first and foremost in order to have the great democratic future that it deserves. I don't know deserves. what that means. You're, well, being, you're having Brexit spelt out to you by somebody who actually works in the food industry who's telling you about Brexit border controls and, you don't and the problems. Need, we do not need to impose a blockade on EU trade. That's just ridiculous. So, You've said that before, and it yes. comes back to it's border totally control. Wrong. But it's not about imposing a blockade. Do you not understand that? What yes, it is. It is. That's our choice. What tariffs we use, what our border controls are, that is okay. up to us. Is that, is that down well, to us? I, I think there are two important points here. Firstly, we've got to realise that neither, you know, a hard Brexit is not the government's position. They have an established position. There are ministers going around Europe as we speak trying to defend that position. This is a position that the Prime Minister, frankly, had to sweat over over the last few months to get it. Um, it, it it's not, for instance, everything that I would like to see, and I'm sure it's not everything that Marcus would like to see, but it is the established position. And that's, but Marcus' point no, is there could still be a reciprocal deal well, with yeah. Europe, and even well, if you crash I, well, out, yeah, they'll meet I us think halfway. If, if, if we come back in September, October, and the white paper, for whatever reason, the Czechs agreement, for whatever reason, has been knocked out, you know, then we go into the scenario of, is it better to have... Um, no deal or a bad deal and we've got to start talking about what a bad deal is and from my point of view a hard brexit wto would be the worst deal of do you want people to talk about it because you want the british public to start to change their mind i want people to face up to the options and the options as far as i'm concerned coming out of a wto hard deal is not going to be a happy one so number 10 has briefed that they want to scare people witless that is irresponsible scaremongering nonsense and it should stop right now and they should okay. they should get behind brexit which people voted for gentlemen thank you very much